now I'm like, I start getting stressed up. Like, oh, I'm going to be on a telly. And I look down and I've got a bikini top on and um, Bridget Fonda knickers. Not, you know, uh, not Bridget Fonda, you know, uh, who's the... Bridget who's the, Jones. Bridget Jones drawers on. Where, where was it filmed at the, what, arena? Bur was it National Burm Indoor Arena. People getting muddled NEC up. NEC people think it is, yeah. National Exhibition Centre. Now, this is right in the middle of um, Birmingham, which was fantastic because... Lots of money from the European Union went in to build the place up. So we see it grow and it's a fantastic place back then. Yeah, they've kept a lot of the old games in yeah, there, which that's, well, that's the they thing didn't want to change say, it too much. Yeah, yeah, when they say, oh, we want to do our, our own thing, and I look, well, it's the same. I more think, yeah, yeah, but, but, I think, like, but if they, I think if they reinvent something too much, then then it fails, yes. doesn't it? And that's but probably why they've gone back. Because of what it was. Yeah. They've done mm. it. It looks great. So they've gone back um, to the old format, is not they? So welcome back to our guest show. We're delighted to have Mick Wilson, Cobra from the original Gladiators. Thank you for coming on. I'm Uncle Mick to Kieran. <laughs> yeah, if anyone don't know, he's my it, uncle. And yeah. to me, he's Uncle Cobra. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think we look alike? Some people Actually, say there's some the similarities. Yeah, yeah. Think, yeah. Maybe if I had short hair and... Yeah. Similar air colour that, that I used to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You used bright blonde, wouldn't you? Now you're yeah, silver well, fox. <laughs> really, really blonde. Then being a bit dark. Mm. Summer. Every time summer comes around, I go blonde. Yeah. Then, then I've had a bit of bleach here and there. Mm. <laughs> now, oh, this ain't great. This is this is grey is the new blonde. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah so even I, though I'm starting to try and sport <laughs> it in the old beard. But there's but, nothing. Well, actually, I was going to say stuff you can do, but there's so many men's products for stuff now, as much as the women. Yeah, you know. air transplants, yes. and all sorts. Yeah, yeah. So if anyone wants I've got the good genes. One. We've got the good genes because you haven't lost your hair. Everyone not else yet. is. Not yet. Oh no, it's gone. It's not going to go now, is it? Oh, it might. Yeah, well, I'm sixty, so. Yeah, but he's sixty. Can't, yeah, I can't believe it. He looked all right for sixty. My didn't dad, he? Um, my dad passed away. His granddad, yeah. sixty, uh, at Easter time. Actually, I was filming the. Um, Wembley Gladiators, and I had a phone call from uh, my brother Gary, and he said, "Oh, Dad's passed away." So that last thing you want to know, just before you went out, yeah, and I thought I've choked, really choked, and then. Oh, how old worth, was you? How old was you but, then when he? Oh, 30. 30, Yeah, yeah. Mm. so I joined the Glads at twenty nine. This is like the year after, like Easter. Uh, so even though years. you're you are my uncle, I don't know loads about the old Gladiator. I was quite young then. <laughs> But I used to go and watch it. How, how did it, how did you get into it? What did that? Like, how well, did it all start getting into gladiators? I used to watch um, the American one coming mm. back from the nightclub that's just closed down in Dartford. Yeah, it used to be called Flicks, and uh, that used to be on. And one night there was advertising. I loved it. I used to leave the nightclub early to get home to watch, watch the American, American gladiators. Yeah. Oh, so it started first in America. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. about nineteen eighty eight. Mm. I remember and, that. Uh, it started off as lots of different companies, like building firms and engineering firms, and this guy Ferrara, I think his name was, he had them compete in all these different games. Mm. And it stemmed from there, and it got so popular that, you know, he, he proposed a, a TV format to with Samuel Goldwyn Mayer, and they took it on. Mm. And now it's, it's a bit of a phenomenon, and it's gone all around the world. So was it like... That was America still involved with the British gladiators? Uh, well, then? was yeah, it a franchise? Because, or? Yes, uh, London Weekend has to pay a franchise fee. Mm. And I think it was fifty percent. Oh, blind! So it's a big investment, yeah. apparently, um, to Samuel Goldwyn Mayer. I, I don't know what the score is now. Um, probably it's going to be the same. I don't know. There are time limits on royalties, or used to be over here, and, and a lot of limitation. Where mm. if something's been on for like quite a few decades, they stop the royalties. Yeah, same yeah. like in medicine, same thing. You have like a seven year mm. Um, mm. free. Like you, no one can sell your product for seven years. After that, then yeah. it's, it's free. So I don't know the score there. So did you apply for this show? Well, my mate, I was talking about this with my friend's mum. She said, "Oh, you won't apply for that." I, said, I fancy it anyway. She did. She applied for you? Yes. Oh, okay, yeah. And I think I thought oh, they wanted a, a photograph and I sent him one and an ice cream, right? <laughs> <laughs> and they found me out. I said, we're not coming for an interview at London Weekend Television. I said, really? He said, yes, but being a, a auditioning for a gladiator. Yeah. Went up then, I met Nigel Lithgow and 
uh, Andrew Norgate, who, who's still producing this show, uh, Nigel Lifko, he, he was Nasty Nigel from Popeye. Yeah, yeah, I remember him, yeah. And um, American Idol now, biggest show viewing figures in Western history, like 45 million views that was getting mm. them finals. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's done all right. Yeah. Mm. Actually, still, I still get a few texts and whatnot from from him. Yeah, oh, really? no, he was quite a nice fella down to earth. You could have a row with him. A lot of, a lot of directors and old producers. You back in the day in show business, you just shut up and get on with it. I remember one of his interviews. I remember. I think it was the X Factor. I think it was Kim Marsh. She cut down, didn't he? On, on yeah, on the program. She was, she, he's looking around and putting on weight, mm. and she she was heavy. He turned around and he said, "The goose yeah. is getting fat," or something, yes. or something like that. Well, you know, which if he done it today, yeah, be the nightmares. It, it, and I tell you, yeah. well, it's, it's a factor. Like it's TV and pop, pop. Uh, if if uh, what's her name? Who's the top girl now? Tall, slim girl going out to American footballer. Taylor Swift. Yeah, yeah. If she put on 200 pounds, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's a fact, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if she was, and he's saying that, you know, there's, he actually, I had something, he had got me. Because I kept my, I love Norman Wisdom, like an old time. That's my nickname. Is it? Yeah. Well, so I've been called, yeah, my, cause my, we, yes, my nickname was Norman for years at, when I was oh, young. Mr. Because yeah. uh, someone's dad said I look like Norman Wisdom, it stuck with me throughout all my well, childhood. Same, that was the same with me. Yeah. I used to always be there. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Nigel Lifko said, I want a gladiator, not Norman Wisdom. Yeah. Yeah, no. And it, it was wrong. <laughs> I was there from the beginning to the end. Like, yeah. And I've had stand up rounds with him. Actually, one was at, at Wembley. This is the thing why, why, why he's so successful because he'll listen to you. Mm. If you're right, he'll take you on board. Um, like the wall once, the first, the beginning of the wall, it would take about se ten seconds to get up, and they used to have a ten second head start. After that, it was like a ladder. I said, "No one's going to get caught this year." Is it the way that's been configured? The wall, yeah. yeah. And that turned out to be true. And he came up to me and I said, "That wall." I said, "Yeah." He said, "You was right." I said, "You know." Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know, you wouldn't take umbrage. And um, I, I took on f about six guys on the duel and other games because a lot of the other glads had been injured so mm. i had to fill in yeah and he asked me i'm really tired this because the long days it's mm. um when we're filming normal gladiators it might do two shows a day sometimes three when there's a celebrity or children's thing mm. and it's like one o'clock at night and it's the warming up delay cold warming yeah, up, yeah yeah then you're bang you're out there like quick 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 so it's all stress you like this all yeah. the time and it knackers you Anyway, I was knackered here, and he said, oh, will you do the jewel for me? I, went, I looked at him like I said, you put it on me? He went, so I, I beat everybody. Yeah. <laughs> and that was big. The contestants that, that year were unsuccessful gladiators. So these are big oh, right. lads. Yeah. yeah. Which is an, actually, if you're tall on that platform, uh, jewelling platform, it, it's an advantage to be small because you, you've got a wider mm. um, style. Yeah, that jewel's also. hard, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I jumped, I jumped off the crash mats all cocky and my left ankle went, <laughs> tore it to pieces. Oh. I really, it's, I've got photos of it, it's massive, my ankle. And uh, he's come backstage, back beyond the stage, he looked at me and went, Pratt. <laughs> I went, well, yeah, I told you I was tired. Yeah. Because I, I said to him, I'm, I'm knackered, I'm tired. I said, it's your fault. Was, uh, you know, so I had several little rows with him, but mm, yeah. he did not take it personally. He took it. Yeah, oh, yeah. John Fashion said, you all right? I said, no, I've hurt my ankle. And 5,000 people in Wembley were laughing. They thought, they thought it was being a normal wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> I've hurt my ankle. Whoa! Said, we're laughing at And I'm look, hopping away and I'm being laughed at by 5,000 people. Yeah. <laughs> and and like, uh, then actually some of the family come up to see me and I'm on, I'm on crutches, like yeah. waving to everyone. It's all on, it's all on YouTube. All yeah, this. yeah. Did you find out when... Like, we'll skip back. What did you do before... Gladiators, was you like you have no, normal job? What? Yeah, I was a lift engineer. Oh, really? Yeah. Was that with Gary? No, I got oh, Gary the job. Oh, you got Gary in the job. Yeah. Lovely job it was. The guy. Be up and down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bet you heard that one. Loud, <laughs> you know? Oh, it's brilliant. It's so brilliant you, yeah, for cranking it's and lifting. People get terrified in a lift. Yeah. And uh, if you turn three off and there's only four, 
things get delayed. And this was all in uh, stockbroker places, um, top insurance companies, top banks yeah. in, in the city. And there's some, you know, some people with money ain't snooty. A lot, a lot of brokers, brokers, stockbrokers back then were like cockneys. Mm. And uh, they used to bang on the lifts. And like, I might have a mate on top and I'm inside cleaning or fiddling about doing whatever and I used to get to drive up. He'd open the door and I'd grab people's ankles. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, like, bang, 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 bang. Wah! I don't know, I didn't get the same. Stuff. One time, I'd let them get in the lift and I'm on top. I'd let them get in and as they, the door shuts and they start scaring us, I start screaming, ah, I'm on the lift, I'm actually on the lift, ah! <laughs> I just, yeah, I'm not really enough. And they get out like that, screaming and panicking. And I'm only joking. <laughs> Got loads of stuff like that. It's brilliant. I don't don't know how. So, were well, you done that from like for, for about four years? Yeah, then, oh, um, it's quite a while. I, then, I yeah. stayed on. Uh, I got the gladiators gig. I, I asked them in the interview, um, "How long uh, will it take to film?" They said three weeks. I only get six weeks holiday. Mm. And it's like five hundred quid a week. I had turned that five hundred quid a week as a. Reserve, which they took me on as. Yeah. I had done auditions, I'm good in auditions. Me and Lightning was a reserve in case any of the others got hurt. Well, okay. It turns out, apparently... Made bad money for that time. No, for, for, for that, holiday. Yeah. And that was the thing. I, also, there was no pressure. I'm just mucking about, having yeah, yeah, a laugh, yeah, yeah, yeah. getting paid. They give you 25 quid a day, what they call per diem, so I was made up with that. Yeah. You know, it's just for bits and pieces. They fed, fed you. Did you have hired. to go on the show much as a reserve or...? Well... Um, two shows in, Nigel Lifko said to me, "We want to sign you up." Mm -hmm. I take me on, so, and they had pressures on there. Yeah, yeah. And I, <laughs> um, my cockiness sort of disappeared, and I started to crap myself. <laughs> now, yeah, one, well, the first show, um, I'm going to be doing the rings. Yeah, because that was sort of your. No, not really. Not Just, really. No, no. No, I was really athletic. Saracen was the best. Now he's six four. And his arms literally are a foot longer. He was a fireman, wasn't yeah. he, before? So, yeah, his arm, arms literally a foot longer. Yeah. So I have to get a real big swing yeah. Yeah. to get to someone where he, he'd grab me from here. <laughs> <laughs> if you watch it, if you get bored one day, you watch. But athletic, athleticism-wise, I'm yeah. like a monkey. Yeah. So I look better and I had a few tricks here and there. But no, he... I, so that's the first one wise. you've done? On well, the first. Yeah, well, I'm standing... Waiting to be introduced. So now I'm like, I start getting stressed up. Like, oh, <laughs> I'm going to be on a telly. <laughs> and I look down and I've got a bikini top on and uh, Bridget Fonda knickers. Not, you know, uh, not Bridget Fonda, you know, uh, who's the, Bridget who's Jones. The, Bridget Jones drawers on with like little snake on it. Oh, my mates can see this. Oh, my God. And I, I did a. It probably is probably a matter of half a second up, but my my ass is twitching. I'm like, I'm going to run. Yeah. I did. Uh, uh, it, it was in my head to leg it, just yeah. run out of the building. <laughs> oh, but I fronted it. Yeah, went out there. Ooh, God. I caught them both. I thought, yeah, sack all the rest. I'm doing something yeah. else. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> the, yeah. But was it but a big like buzz like after after well, you done no, it? Was it, it, it a it's buzz? It's all or? fun and silly and that for all. I pushed pushed through it, trying to trying to be a gladiator. What they wanted, mm. I think, to relax to be just like being myself, more or less. And it wasn't until we come out to meet the press, and it, we come out, and there must have been 30, 40 photographers there mm. and camera crews, and we're we're always because <laughs> it's all unreal. Yeah, back then you got to remember that no one had. Cameras, no social phone. media was there. There weren't actually mobile phones. Not a lot of people had mobile phones. No, no, there was no no social media. It's probably email on the odd computers. Mm -hmm. It's bigger than this room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, most people had carrier pigeons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's over your head, isn't it? Yeah, in fact, in most things are yeah. over his head. <laughs> <laughs> your actually, your great granddad that lived down the road here, he was he was a champion pigeon fancier. He used to race pigeons. Oh, oh did right. they? I don't know do that. They don't fly fast. <laughs> but, yeah, he's, he's a champion. They had, had one of the top um, pigeon fancies. Anyway, digress. Uh, <laughs> did you know that? No. Oh. <laughs> no. And 
I've lost track. Oh, yeah, we're like, oh, my God, this is serious. Mm. And, yeah, it's everywhere, all the papers, massive. And again, being in front of a camera is a big deal. Yeah. Because uh, back then... That must you, run in the family, because he's like that. Don't you? Yeah, yeah I, I, don't, used, I don't like being I, on the camera. No, I used to run away as a kid. <laughs> My mum used to uh, do everything to Nan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> used to persuade it. To go on, get in there. I, I hated it. Yeah. Then when I got really handsome. I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> am I? Anyway. Yeah, she you'd, must you'd have been have to a shock. A, yeah. Well, you'd have to buy a roll of film back then, uh, take your photos, take that roll of film down to a chemist, wait like days or mm. a long time to go and pick your prints up, then boom, that's like that. And everyone's in the camera. But and then find out you left deal. a lens cap on. Yes. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, sometimes it's crap, you know, especially got a crappy uh, camera. And um, so it's, everyone's in front of a camera now all the time mm. with all your mates. It's mm-hmm. just nothing. But back then, like a lot of my mates talk the same. It's, you, we used to have those big video cameras like, the size of a house, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, and you know, everyone used to get really self conscious as yeah, well. Yeah. So, that there's another thing that kids probably wouldn't identify with now mm. is everyone with their phones. I know it's just a, a natural for any anything happens outside now, everyone, someone's got a fucking phone, on yeah, the which is or, horrible yeah. because you see so like, truth, a big, isn't it? someone getting b- bashed up or something, yeah, and they just get the films out, the cameras out instead of intervening, yeah, mm. yeah, it's awful. At least throw the camera at them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but what about then? Um, so, wh- where was it filmed at the what arena? Bur- uh, was it National Burman? Indoor Arena? People getting muddled NEC up. NEC people think e- is, yeah. National Exhibition Centre. Now this is right in the middle of um, Birmingham, which was fantastic because lots of money from the European Union went in to build the place up. So we see it grow, and it's a fantastic place back then. Apparently, it's a little bit dangerous now around Broad Street and around the centre of. Of there, but back then it's we was in a terrific hotel, all paid for. Um, extras weren't paid for. That's not the same. That's not NEC. Not NEC. No, no, that's, not, it's that's right. right. Out, that's out, out on the outskirts. Got yeah. Big, um, like huge warehouse, really. Yeah. How did you? Um, so how did they come up with the names then? Well, how- I've had two stories with mine. Um, there was. There it's was not, a gladiator, not, American one called Cobra, but someone told me from a good source that um, Bob Monkhow suggested it to Nigel Lithgow. Oh, really? Yeah, I heard this. Through, yeah. It wasn't a humble brag or anything like that. No, no, no it's from, <laughs> it, it was from a friend that worked at London Weekend that told me this. Right. Really? And through the grapevine. I'd, but there was an American blonde gladiator in like, 1989 who did a season that was called Cobra, so I presume that there are female Cobras. It's one I'm still in touch with who lives in Finland. She female. bite. She bite. She's big. It's a fantastic show. She's like 56, rich, massive. Yeah. And now there's another one that was a Nigerian gladiator. Now, I see on the internet Cobra, the Cobra gladiator, and there's a picture of this ripped torso. It's a black ripped torso. I thought, well, that ain't my... my <laughs> that's not my... I'm not that ripped and I'm not that colour. So this guy's a personal trainer, also does extras. Oh, right. Extras? Uh, yes, sexual favours. Oh, I, I, both so, I thought you meant as a, like an extra in that like, film or something. No, he does extras in sex work. Oh, right. And I think, I hope I ain't going to get muddled up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two gladiators, all living in sort of London area, you yeah. know, Mind you, I haven't, I haven't been muddled up because I haven't been offered no money or any work <laughs> did for the you, right price, folks. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you did you have like a, a like an international one? Like where yes. you yeah, so you're all like congregated yeah. from different countries. America, clans. Germany, Russia. No, it's brilliant. The Russians. Mm-hmm. I become all good friends with a fella called Dynamite. I become a, a movie star and a big TV star in, in Russia, right. Dinamitri, and um, he's done Strong Man and all sorts. He's, and uh, he died at 46, oh, 47, I can't, a heart attack or something. And, uh, yeah, he'd become a bit, he's fan. Uh, I got them to teach me Russian swear words. <laughs> As you stuff. do, yeah. You know, a lot of time to fill up backstage. Yeah. And I don't know what I was saying to the girls, but I'm shouting out this stuff. And uh, I obviously was pronouncing it really well because this dynamite come and grab me, put, pick me up, 
put his hand over my mouth. And I go, no, no, for the <laughs> And like, he's put me down. I've let it over that nail chasing me. Like, because whatever I was saying was really, really rude yeah, and yeah. bad, obviously. So I had to pack that in. How long was the series for then? How long did you I, film? I, I, uh, oh, each series was like an initial tw- 12, I think. Then we was doing the international celebrities, mm. children's. And you feel, how many days did you have to film of the week? Um, well, it's, it varied because you know, there's one year we was filming uh, uh, for six weeks and um, it could be like two days on a trot, day off. Mm. Sometimes two days off. It, it, it must be tiring. It's like you, you, you working. must have been training in between that as well. Sort yeah, well, I got really fit. Actually, the fitness I always was was before I had live shows, which we did three at Wembley mm. and one at Sheffield, where they're filming now. Right. No gladiators, because if you get injured and you're not fit fit for the live shows and you get hurt, you're buggered. You won't be doing a TV yeah. show. So I was always my best at the live shows. It's a lot of pressure to stay in shape, isn't it? But I always it? used to train before yeah. I ever was, I was on the grades. I used to ride my bike to London and back, you know, from Brands Hatch. Because mm. your background was London. bodybuilding. So when it? you yeah. from school then, you was obviously sporty at school. No, not really. No? I was sort of, no, not really. I was uh, I was a natural all-round athlete because of genetics for my dad, I suppose. Yeah. Like we had a... That's to me, I'm like sort of average at everything, sort of. Yeah, I... Uh, average? Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> you heard him. He's average. <laughs> we, um, this one day at school that we did shot put, long jump, uh, was it 200 metres... And high jump, and I won every one. And it's all four thingies. And I weren't really trying. So I was always good, natural yeah. thing. Yeah. And I won Dartford Superstars competition. Every year, there, there used to be a TV show back in the 70s called Superstars, where they'd have lots of sportsmen from uh, football, everything, took pros. Yeah. Like, like, um, George Best and all these people. Kevin Keegan, actually, not George Best. And Wolf's brother-in-law, Brian Jacks, that used to win it every year. And it's a multi... Multi sport competition, they had Dave, cycling, sprinting, dips. Yeah. And Dartford ran this competition for about five years. Yeah. Friday Friday night, I was asked to fill in for an army PTI that pulled out. I yeah. said, Yeah, sure. And the guy that was running it was a lifeguard down there, really fit guy. And he's he come second the last two years. So Friday night, he's, he's asked me if I'd um, compete. I said, Yeah, on a Sunday. Granddad, your granddad was there. Mm. And, um, he cheated, actually, this lad, on the dips. He had his mate counting the dips and a couple of little skullduggery things. Anyway, I won. I, I, the, 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 the win, you got to win. The points was really close and uh, it, it was on the, on the swim, 50-metre swim, off of blocks. So, And I'm not a swimmer. He is. This is his thing. But I got off the blocks really well. 50 metres, you ain't got to have great technique. No, don't just like, go for I was, it. Yeah. I, was like an, I was like an epileptic wow coming from <laughs> epileptic <laughs> elephant coming from it. smashed it and we got out and he shot now he didn't need to ask me he's come second three years running now he's come second uh, two years running now he's come second the third I still feel guilty about it yeah he went that's really that's a really good club time I was shocked and uh, my plaque my name was on the plaque down there for yeah. years yeah. I don't know if it still is oh I'm really proud of it but yeah. so you but so you left school but so what? it's natural uh, Long story short, uh, natural all-round athlete. Burning ambition from school, though, what did you? You didn't see yourself being on a program called Gladiators, no. did you? You sort of like, what was your sort of like ambition went, from leaving school? Then was it just go work? I wanted every to day? be. I wanted to do what Van Damme was doing. Oh right. I wanted to be Bruce Lee with big muscles. I love Bruce Lee. That's I wanted to do like Enter the kung dragon. fu films. Yeah. yeah. Then Van Damme came along. He's a few years old and. That was really – so this was sort of an Is that why you did your roundhouse on the thing? Was that you, Did you used yeah, to do well, – was it you done the roundhouse yeah, on the actual yeah. thing? Yeah. yeah. I used to jump – I used to put people on chairs and get them to stand up with something up and then jump up and kick their hands and stuff. Someone texted me the other day about me jumping over their head at, in a bit Bexley uh, High Street, doing the splits in the middle of the road, showing yeah. off. Oh, you did, I did all oh. the old splits and all that. I used, I, I used to be able to stand my back against the wall – and put my foot 
touching the back of the ball. I don't know why I wanted to do that. <laughs> yeah, I, I could. I used, to, I used to be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't now. No, I've got two. I'd be laying down doing it, touching the ball with my foot, but I wouldn't be able to stand doing it. But I used to watch them um, films that Van, Van, you probably don't know. Van no, Van no, that was a good film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blood sport and kickboxers, wasn't it? And he used to get, oh. they used to do the ropes, didn't they, on his legs, pulling yeah. them apart. So that's what inspired you then. Well, Bruce Lee did really. Yeah. Then he came along. I was just nothing but jealous. Yeah. Mm. And um, actually, I met one of the guys from uh, Kickboxer. Dennis Alexio, his name was, and he was in. Um, he gets hurt and he ends up in a wheelchair. The the big bad Thai boxer beats him up and he ends oh, up. Oh, oh, the, the the Jackson was he in Blood I can't Sport? Was what that his name? Was oh, oh yeah, yeah, he was a real life kickboxer. Yes, in, in Kickboxer, Ale- wasn't he? Yeah, Alexio, Dennis Alexio, and I met him twice. In Hawaii, mm. so I used to go to Hawaii for born with a training. Right, yeah, tough old life. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I did. I trained three times a day, and he worked as a kickboxing instructor in yeah. um, Waikiki or Honolulu in Gold's Gym. Yeah, and he's a complete asshole. Oh, really? He was, oh, disappointment, wasn't it? Well, didn't, he, didn't, he end up, didn't he end up in jail? He's done loads of time. Yeah, was it massive tax, ego? Was it tax oh, evasion? violence and or? domestic stuff? This oh, really? I, I think so. Allegedly, yeah, I, that's what I read. Normally, you meet a champion of any sport, and they're usually pretty humble. Mm-hmm. Normally, that bravado and hubris on in front of cameras, you know, I mean, get, get thingy. In the film, he was like that, wasn't he? It, it, like before, before he got put in a wheelchair, he it's, was one that's of what he's. That's what he is like. <laughs> yeah. Well, Warriors Gladiator Warrior, his friend friend Andy Sandling fought him and got and got beat by him because he was a he was a good good fighter in his day. What is, was and, he uh, the big one, Warrior? Was he? Yes, he's six huge, four, really, yeah, and a bit twenty two stone to start yeah, with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Went down to nineteen and a half. Um, I said to this Dennis and Lex, "Oh, you you, you fought." My friend's friend, Andy Sandlin, said, yeah, I knocked him out in two rounds. And I thought, that's a bit ungenerous. Yeah. Anyway, um, that was the first year that the UFC started and there was a poster on the wall. I said, oh, what do you think about that? I said, I'll fight anybody. <laughs> What's up with you? I'm not, I'm not worried about him. I'll fight anybody. Well, he was obviously intimidated by, by this co- complete, no hold, holds barred, bare knuckle fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, yes, yeah, similar little snapping out. I think, oh, mm. what have I done to you? Because I'm doing the splits and I'm big. Yeah. I was same height as him, maybe a little bit taller, I might have been back then. And um, same thing, sitting next year, going, oh, how are you doing? Yeah, well, yeah. I think, you wanker. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. No, 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 we're all right. Yeah, that's oh, what... oh, yeah, I don't. It's disappointing sometimes. They say you shouldn't meet your heroes. Yeah. Not that he was. Oh, I, I met Jason Scott Lee in the hotel as well, who, who played Bruce Lee. Oh, yeah, yeah. I see that film, yeah. Yeah, he, he, I was standing in the Hawaiian Hilton Hotel. Yeah. What was you in yeah, Hawaii nice for? I a few quid on the what, TV what, show. What, what was you said, in Hawaii for? What, what training, I, I yeah. go, go there, literally, on, for a legitimate reason, because it's quite high up above sea level. Yeah. So you have to work harder to get your oxygen. And I'd train three times a day in a beautiful environment. Where And at that time, it was about March, it wasn't too hot. Mm-hmm. I took I took your mum, uh, Nan, out there as well the first time. Mm-hmm. She, that's when you could smoke on planes. That's She's crazy, like, oh. isn't it? I sat with her, obviously, <laughs> my wife, at the back of the plane. And it was... It's like smog. It's <laughs> and it's not like Imagine a Imagine smoking on planes. I, took like, two, I think we landed in uh, Chicago to start with, then a follow-on flight. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> she used to do 40 to 60 a day, your name. Yeah. She gave up that, didn't yeah. she? Yeah. Well, that granddad died. Yeah. Then she had a problem with her, her lungs, and there was a shadow on her lungs. Mm-hmm. It's Hank Marvin. It's way better. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, all you older folk, if you're watching, you watch it, hear that. Which I met, he's a lovely fella. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm, I'm in the hotel. I, I've been up playing like the old video games in in the Hilton there. And um, I've come out and I've seen Jason Scott Lee having a row with his girlfriend. Oh. I go, oh. Oh, well, it's Star Trek. It's just got there. Uh, oh, the film Dragon was on the plane on the way over oh, there. Oh, right. So you were and, like... And, oh, gets freakier. Uh, Bruce Lee's best friend, Danny Nassanto, and his wife was on the same flight as mine going out there. Oh, 
So, You've been surrounded by him all, all your life, haven't you? All these years, look, loving Bruce Lee, and they're, they're all there except for Bruce. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I've come down to him, what are you doing here? And I, he's, you know, in the middle of a round. I live here, man. Went, oh, okay. <laughs> 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 and, uh, Hello, you wonderful listeners and watchers. Just pumping the brakes on this exciting episode to let you know about Kieran's app. That's changing the game in the gas certificate world. If you're sick and tired of doing gas certificates on paper, then gas certificate app is your way forward. But it wouldn't be an app worth talking about if that's it. With no hassle, you can manage your diaries, invoices and quotes for all your jobs so you'll never be chasing paperwork again. Don't forget those boiler manuals. I can tell you how many times I've been looking at a boiler and thinking, what the... Thankfully, the in-app boiler manuals have saved me and got me out of quite the pinch. If it's helped Pete here, then Gas Certificate app will definitely help you, especially with its easy-to-use gas red calculator and the extremely handy ability to duplicate certs. Brilliant for when you're doing your annual services on previous jobs. So click the link down below or in the description. Use the code POD30 to get 30% off yearly subscriptions. That's for all new users. That's POD30 for 30% off our yearly subscriptions for new users. Here it, it was warm air climate change. Oh, yeah, why, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. why you went out. So they and send it, that, you out there. I'm telling you, it makes a massive difference. That's why a lot of athletes do it. A lot of them go to um, Lanzarote, don't they? Up, mm. up in the hills there, um, Tenerife. Mm. It, it, it does, it makes a massive difference. Mm. So it was Gladiators was what? How many seasons was it on the TV? I did eight there. Then yeah. I did a, a eleven shows in South Africa. Right uh, after our show finished with a few few of our other lads. Yeah. But MTN that was a brilliant experience as well. So they done it out there. Yeah, okay. done it everywhere. Yeah, uh, in some of the Arabian countries. I can't remember <laughs> where. A, a, a UAE countries. Um, everywhere. So. You, um, Finland, Holland, Ge no, Germany didn't. They sent some lads over uh, with some costumes to see how it would um, fare in a, in Germany, but it, it, they did You'd think it. they'd be right of it because they're always in speedos so when you were going on and <laughs> see them, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know what, why, that, why that happened. Budget maybe, yeah. you know. Because, again, that, that lot of money used to go over to the States, which I've been talking recently over the last three years to... Dan Clark they used to be called Nitro on the American Glads because they've just they produced a documentary called um, Muscles and Mayhem. Right. And it was number one on Netflix um, last year about, you know, the gladiators and the background of gladiators. Mm -hmm. That their show was completely different. They used to do touring shows and they'd be up to their eyeballs on huge amounts of um, painkillers. A bit like steroids. the wrestling, isn't it? A bit like the yes. wrestlers, I guess, oh, yeah, isn't well, it? Oh, yeah, you get smashed. You compare it to that. And, if, yeah, wrestling's really hard. Mm. Which I've, I've done a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've done a Cadbury's Roses advert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's on the YouTube under dodgy, eight, uh, dodgy 90s uh, wrestling advert. Oh, right. Yeah, I, was, uh, I, was <laughs> I went for an audition for this. I just got the Gladiators. I'd had just been... Finished airing, I think. Then I had an audition for this wrestling advert. I ain't done none of this stuff before. Mm. And um, I got it. And it's like 10 grand for two days. I thought, what have I been going to work for? This is easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I was lucky. I put this big blonde wig on and I just looked like an American wrestler. I got, yeah. Also, because of me martial arts, I could land. Yeah. Like a guy called Jackie Pello used to be a 70s wrestler from the big 70s TV show. And... Uh, like I could land and I had muscles and mm. I'd tanned and had long blonde curly hair with this wig on with another guy. And um, the other, uh, it was a tag team thing. What, what it was, I get beaten up by the big bad wrestler in the tag team uh, and my nan jumps over the ring, beats him up and we give her a box of roses, say thanks, Mum. I think I remember that advert. Yeah, yeah it was on for an Easter and a Christmas. And um, the other guy in the other tag team was Wolf's brother. Yeah, it's a small world. Yeah. It's probably, they, these, Wolf used to do a bit of wrestling. Yeah, so, so, like, Wolf in the Gladiators probably was what your age is now when he... <laughs> no, he's, 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 he, he's when 10, he, 40, but he did, to us, he was 10, like a generation older, like uh, five years older than, and uh, Warrior was the second oldest, so he's 34 years, about 40. But yeah. he's fit, he still is. 
Mm. He's 71. He's Is in he? incredible shape. Yeah. He's leg pressing a thousand pounds. I see him, uh, I've met up with him about just before, um, what's his name, lockdown. Yeah. About three, three years ago, four years ago. Ripped. I went training with him. Well, I didn't. I sat down there and had a cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, I'm like, what the? Incredible, isn't he's it? He's always yeah. been on top of his diet. He's never relaxed off of it. Yeah. Yeah. He's told me he's never had a cold. I believe he, he, so, he used to weigh his food absolutely on, on pinpoint to it, which, you know. Did they give you food there? Like, what was yeah, the... Oh, yeah, we was fed. We had canteen there. Oh, <laughs> they asked us <laughs> the first year, all us. They never, they was, the, Nigel Lithgow and his par- partner, Ken Warwick, were dancers. They said, what do you guys eat? I said, well, we have, like... Steaks, steak salmons, tuna, a chicken breast, you know, all this. Yeah. So they thought we meant each meal. They said, Oh, let me try to it's old. Some sometimes we're, you know, getting ready for shows and we eat five times a day. So they bought in like five lots for each one of us, <laughs> like a steak each, <laughs> salmon steak each. And they come up and said, Oh, it's costing too much. It's like twelve hundred pounds a day. It's costing- <laughs> so, no, which just means this is what we incorporate into a diet, a yeah, body, yeah, yeah. bodybuilding diet. <laughs> Not, Not every, every meal. meal. Yeah. So yeah, twelve hundred quid a day in like in nineteen ninety two. Oh. So that's be like two grand a day. Bloody just hell. just for yeah. So I went, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you all get on? Yes. You all got on. As yeah, a, and like, still do when we run into each other. Uh, there was, I think. Between some and the girls over the years, there's a little bit of nig- niggle there, mm. but little bits and pieces. But mate, I'll get on really well with them. It, my my yeah. favourite was Jet. It, you know, yeah, I see a little while ago. I see, I see him quite a lot doing Comic Cons. What's Comic Cons? Right, they're um, they're like events in, in all different types of venues where they have character like Doctor Who there and the TARDIS and people dress up as their favourite TV or movie characters. They mm. walk, you know. <laughs> They walk around dressed up as a, a Ewoks. Or, yeah, yeah. Or You're going Chewbacca. to watch the show. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard uh, they really, they've got really, really big. Yeah. Mm. And people from, like, from Heidi Eye, you know, the mm. cast from some of these old mm. shows. Um, one I went to had all the all the Bond girls there. Oh. But from the 60s and 70s. Yeah. They're all wearing wheel, though. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, so you get, um, they had, one I was at Coventry had... Uh, Reunion of um, Quadrophenia film, really big cult film in the eighties. Yeah. And I met Phil S- Daniels, who was Sting was in it, wasn't he? Yes, he was the only, He didn't turn up. No. Good, really. But um, Phil Daniels was there, an actor that was in East Enders, probably not known for. I'm like, oh my god, it's Phil yeah, Daniels. Yeah, like Phil Daniels. He done the yeah. Blur. Um, John Altman, Nick Dirty, Nick Cotton, who I did Panther with. Mm. He was there. Yes, yeah, it's, it's like that must from, have been hard doing that Panther at the same time as. Well, uh, the series. Was it no. Aladdin, you said? Well, it was Aladdin. Yeah. That's what, what I remember being Aladdin. Lad- what was it? Yeah, Aladdin in Darlington. Yeah. There's a the thing. I did Darlington for about 10 weeks. Then I had two weeks in the Grand Leeds because we were, um, me and Jet was in Panto in Darlington. And we don't know nothing about it. She probably did because she's. That's so in Panto is hard. Like, it's well, hard enough being in front of a camera. You done nothing like that. Yeah, yeah. Before. It's not. You're, I'm coming out. Now I'm dressed as a G. I've got big baggy pants on and curly shoes. <laughs> eh? And a li- little little waistcoat with like sprinkles of gold on it. And a hat, one of those big yeah, you know, yeah, turbans yeah. on. So I'm going from one extreme to another thing. And uh, it's with the Crankies, an old time yeah. couple, double double act. And uh, we've come out when the school kid, and we, all they're doing is go, Cobra, Cobra. Uh, Sometimes, yeah. Like, oh, <laughs> and like Jeanette Cranky, one of the stars, said, I don't know, what, it's like a pop concert. Well, my bothering. She's talking to me like this. Oh, no script, because it's such a big phenomenon. Yeah. Phenomenon. So they, like... It was mental. Then it, then the older people started coming in, because you had school parties, you see. Yeah. Then it relaxed a little bit. But like, I just thought, oh, this is normal. But, uh, did you did you not, did you have a script? Yeah, that, but but yeah. you had lived a, oh, a lot of guests. Well, I had, to, I had a, a audience participation piece with um, getting the kids up and having a little duel with them and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Oh right. Yeah. And yeah. Oh no, I was, I was all right as it happens. I worked at it, but the second one I did with Bobby Davro. Oh yeah. Who's ill at the moment? All the best. Chief. Is he? He's loved. Yeah, he was in a protecting hospital a few weeks ago. 
I used to um, love his program. He's not. He's a, he's a really nice fella. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I'd given this script. Now I'm a, I was a lifting engineer. Well, I, I I stayed at work for for about eight months till nicking a lot of money. Then I think I'll take a chance. Then I got mm. enough. Oh, while while well, she's doing gladiator. Yeah, she's doing, I'm still yeah. doing. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I kept taking time off sick to do press. <laughs> Did you? Yes. <laughs> I took two weeks off once, sick. Well, I said I had gastroenteritis. <laughs> anyway, I'd done a, see, bright me, I did a photo shoot at the Sun offices. <laughs> 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 um, they had me shirt, I got my shirt off and I'm in a lift in the Sun offices that was near the embankment back then. Anyway, I've gone back to work this, and my boss went, you how you feeling? I said, oh, God, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> in two weeks, shit in me. Oh, God, it's evil. He said, you look all right here. <laughs> I said, oh, fuck. I said, oh, I know it's inside. That was fantastic. It's yeah. a Japanese company. Mm. And the, the, upstairs was the Japanese bosses. And I was all fine. I was, wish me, you know, good uh, luck in your new career. Yeah. It's really lovely. But, yeah, I took the mickey. But they, they were so yeah, good. Yeah, but that's going to be. It's, it's a fantastic job as well, that was. It's really good money. And to start with, um, they didn't have a lot of jobs. And my mate was always in the gym. He had a brand new Capri 280. Capri. He used to live at work. Mm. I said, get me a job, get me a job. Get a, I begged him for about a year. Go on, get me a job. Get me a job. Mm. And it's brilliant. We, the first day, we went into the office, signed in, come back home. <laughs> but we started, get, started getting busier and busier and busier. Yeah. They, they had an MP in the pocket and and... Paid out, they, they give a few backhanders because there's a Japanese company come out of nowhere and mm. take up all the prestigious jobs, like even in a, the the picture lift in, in the um, National Gallery, G, GLC, GLC buildings. I don't know that, allegedly, yeah. but mm. come out of nowhere a couple of years and got all these fantastic jobs there. It's brilliant. My mate's a lift engineer, actually, down, in, uh, down this way, actually. I think somewhere he's... Yeah, he's been in the game all his life. You might come across him being in the lift engineer game, but I won't mention it's, his name here. But it's a few years now. Yeah, he's been yeah, in it 32 since. Years. Well, he's your age. He's your age, so you know you might. It's, come it's good. It's good. Good business. You got because you, you have to do electrics and everything, didn't you? Well, I, yeah, I was sort of an apprentice. I, I was just start. They they started doing. Um, MVQs and that as I left. Oh, right. My little, Gary had to do it all and yeah. Scott left because he's got uh, reading problems and stuff mm. or I think he went to do something else anyway. And, um, yeah, I didn't have to do that. I was just like an apprentice with was, the tools. Was you all right on, on the job. Was you all right on heights? No. <laughs> it's true. I've always been terrified with heights. So, uh, yeah. Climbing walls, left lift I, engineer, yes. and he's scared of heights. Yes. This, it's Battling true. your demons now, out, isn't it? If something on the TV or YouTube that's at height, I start think it starts going over. Yeah. But I know it's a good job. On the on on top of the buildings, I'd be like this on the walls. Yeah. But in a lift and a shaft, it's a different perspective. Mm. And I always trust my hands, yeah. my grip. Not now. I've got nerve damage, and I can't feel much now. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, that. But when I finish, finished the glades, it got worse. I was terrible because mm. of the height thing. Yeah, and it's it's really. Strange. But I just subconsciously, I, I've got to do it. Yeah. I made myself do it. I'm, I'm twice as bad now. You know, um, like you say, when I suppressed you suppressed it, when you when you finished the gladiators, and I've I've heard like when they say like wrestlers, I heard I think Hulk Hogan said it in an interview. When you like. So your last show, you knew it was your last show, yeah? Before. Before. Like, you... I said that he see it in the paper, but... I'm... Did they sign you up for a year? Of, I was thinking of leaving after the fifth year. I think I should move on, take this platform to do something else. But yeah. But it's such a good job and easy. You know, I was comfortable with doing it. And it's familiar. I didn't move on, but um, I d did all right. I paid off two mortgages. Yeah. But when you finished, yep. like, did you find it hard, like, resting... And sleeping and stuff like that. No, because um, no, you're going from an environment where it's like, yeah, <sighs> yeah, no, like this that. is yeah, this is where the sportsmen and when they retire, they start gambling or taking drugs and yeah. filling that butt buzzing. But when, when we was filming the shows, it didn't stop. We're, we're tra traveling, traveling all over the country. Sometimes lots of different places abroad. So you're still there. But the, the week after Panto, even because mm. you're going out in front of eighteen hundred people, you don't know it's going to mm. go. Mm. So you have this suppressed. Energy, you don't, you got, you, you, you got all that nervous energy, and when you stop, 
I'd used to sleep for a week. And oh, when right. the grad's finished, yeah. so I had to go up and down the country doing a PA. And, yeah, and this is what happens, I think, with the footballers. Because how do you replace going out in front of 10,000 people in a, in a mm. football environment? That, that cheering's mental, isn't it? Yeah. And then you stop. You ain't got to go training in, 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 yeah. in the mornings. That's why in the afternoons, they should keep them busy in the afternoons as well because mm. a lot of the gambling problems that mm. footballers have yeah. is when they've got afternoons free and stuff. <clears throat> and, yeah, I can see that's, that's what happens. But um, it didn't because I was still doing – Visiting schools, telling kids to eat properly and leave the booze alone. Hung yeah, over yeah. sometimes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I had friends who, who ran this school things in, in Northern Ireland and they like a drink over there. And there's this Polish vodka called Grosz Schlager, not Grosz Lager, Schlager. It's an aniseed, it's like an aniseed tasting vodka with gold leaf in it. It's, it's, I've seen oh, that, I think, yeah. It's too nice. So they'd be... Oh, I'd be visiting the school tent because I would leave the booze alone and eat properly, come back, curry, curry, vodka. <laughs> and I'd be, and I never, I, for a long time, I, I, I would like to remember more of Southern and Northern Ireland, yeah. but I'm like that yeah. on the way to the school. Yeah, don't think <laughs> it's <laughs> not good. <laughs> and mum makes me love. Yeah. But it never, it never, it still hasn't stopped. This is yeah. the thing. I'm off to um, Bristol at the weekend to do uh, uh, to visit a, a, a shop that a nostalgic retro shop. All right. Meeting people there. Mm. Yeah, and I've got a, got a, quite a few up and down the place. As you got, you're still quite busy. Well, it's with, got in... busier with these Comic Con the... events. And then um, COVID. I know it's in COVID turned up and a lot of people went out. Business and lot lot was stopped. Mm. It's never gone away. It's always been something there. Yeah, always an interview. Just shows how big it was, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah and pe- I don't know what it is. There's so many channels, podcasts, and different mm. YouTube channels, and so many different mm. pla- me- social media platforms and, and stuff. Now, mainstream TV is taking a massive kick in, mm. in yeah. the nuts, isn't it? So that's why this gladiator is doing well. It's eight point seven million. That's, that's incredible with all this competition. When we was on, it's only four channels, mm. maybe five come along. Did anyone get the sack as a gladiator? Yes. What shadow for taking the steroids? Oh, did they? And it? cocaine. Oh, so they do. They was trying to. We had proper random drugs testing. People don't believe it. But, yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't know they done drug testing. Prop, yeah. It was the Olympic. The people that did the Olympic um, yeah. stuff. Actually, I was talking to the head guy. Uh, Got his name now. I said, oh, I go training over in Hawaii. What, what, what would you do there then? He says, I've got a place in Hawaii. I thought, oh, I won't be tempted there then. Mm. Yeah, yeah. No matter. What. Oh, they've turned up at Panto. Oh, I'm in Panto with Little and Large, Sam Kane, and a few other no- notaries. Uh, a girl from um, from Neighbours, and uh, I'll share my let my mate share my room. Uh, one of um, one of them was related to Paul Gascoigne and his mate. They were up in my room, puffing, smoking away. Well, and the drug tester turned up. So, uh, where can we go? I said, I, need, I can only go up, go up in my uh, room. Oh, that, no! I said, come. I'll go and open it. It's like stinking. Yeah. I'm going, oh, fuck. <laughs> there goes my great job. But where no, do you want me to answer. piss? <laughs> oh, <laughs> and I have to watch you. I'd have to know. watch yeah. you. You have to watch you. Look at your dick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is Which that is... where you got the name Cobra? <laughs> <laughs> they said it should be Anaconda. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them used to try, try and buy half a pound off me. <laughs> <laughs> was um was Eureka like? Nice. Yeah. But if, before you ask, I don't like queuing. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> well, apparently, well, she was four kids, four different fellas. She, um, she, I think this, there, there was rumours about orgies. Now, I was interviewed by the son about about gladiators and the new show coming up and stuff, and. Uh, this was last year. Double page spread. Anyway, I said, if there was orgies, I said, first of all, if Ulrika said there was orgies, how could she hear? She was three stories up. 
the back, the back, she had a posh suite. We had like a normal room, which was still nice. Anyway, I said, if there was orgies, why well, wasn't I invited? What's, <laughs> what's fucking wrong with me? <laughs> but they cut that out. They said, Cobra said there was orgies. Okay, yeah. Uh-huh. So, now people people ask me often about my orgies. Like you, you read the paper, it says you know one show like three shows. I was tipsy, maybe a little bit more. Right? You read any stuff you look, can look up on on the internet. I'm a raving alcoholic. Like just all I did there was orgies, and I looked well on it, didn't I? <laughs> you know, raving alcoholic, like shagging all the time. <laughs> anyway, and the lad Bible, I said. That there's a thing called lead. Yeah, it? yeah. It said that um, I used to say that we used to go down to the crew, cruise hotel, bonking. Stupid term, anyway. Yeah. We used to go down and play snook and have a beer with the crew. Yeah, they take anything, <laughs> don't they? they? Take it out of context. Oh, everything. At least you can have a redress nowadays. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the trouble is, it, ta- it, it takes legitimate ju- journalism. It, it's a no- now in a legitimate journalist. Mm. thing really you don't believe anything you're listening to but now that, then again you've got lots of platforms to try and work out what the truth is yeah, yeah. Just been a lot, i watch a lot of politics or geopolitics because people but don't you, cope well with being in the press and saying negative stuff about them they all struggle well, it's, and, like, it's just like having yeah. your neighbors slagging you off yeah that ain't nice is it not Sarah's and a few of the other lads have been always like getting a retraction or their lawyers on the stuff I said, nightmare. Yeah, the hunter's gone on it. No, we tracked that. Mm. One of the lads phoned up the editor when they was they, they was knocking on their doors. A few when the sec, uh, Sky did a version of Glads when they, they started doing that, and they said to one of our lads' wives, they phoned up, if you don't do a story with us, we're going to come around and go through all your bins and do this and do that. What? Yeah, I had them. I told them I didn't want to do a story. They went in my next door neighbours in, in the pub next door to where my ex wife used to work um, in the hairdressers, asking, oh, Where does he live? Gone into the shop with my wife, was there, where, Where's uh, Cobra? Where's his wife? And all this. I said, Oh, he doesn't live here anymore. Then they actually knocked on my door up the road back then. And I op- I don't normally open it. I open it. Oh, I want to do a story. I told him to. Fornicate off. Yeah. So, oh, we want to. Do, I don't want to do a best story. We want to do a nice story, which it was actually. But, but um, this one with Saracen, he phoned up the editor and you know told him. To Who's stop. that off the Daily Star? Uh, this was no, this was News of the World. News. Of, oh, was it? Weren't Morgan? Was it? No, it, no. That's he was a Daily Mirror, wasn't he? I don't know. Yeah. Um, he, he found. Uh, you don't want a big six foot four. 17 stone fellow. Oh, I just near enough told you who he was then, didn't I? <laughs> told him to stop it. And yeah. he did. But this this the second this was the second one actually where they knocked him on my door. That's a, t- a different time. But I had it loads of times. Mm-hmm. I keep things wrong. You look at look me up. Some people could ask me, oh, do I li- do, do I live in the Midlands doing watercolours? That's something I probably made up. <laughs> <laughs> they knocked on they knocked on mum Nan's door, your your and and uh Said, is, "Am I there?" They, and uh, said, "No." Then the next story came out. And said, "Oh, I'm living in Thailand. They've got me muddled, muddled up, didn't they, with Scott? Scott yeah. Wow. Oh. So my little brother worked, lived in Thailand for 14 years. Yeah, so you know, even when they're doing nice stories, they get stuff wrong. Yeah. You think it wouldn't be too hard to get right, really? Would you? If you've they, if sometimes you've done... they twist and turn things, or just just leave things out and make it seem a little bit more interesting. Uh, I had a nice interview the other week that was in in, in the Kent make, uh, papers. That was nice. A couple of things were, was a little bit wrong, and, and a bit, it, was, it was a nice thing. But local papers and that, they, yeah, they, they use it to get people to watch or it's listen, like, don't they? I, this, read. I was talking to like my neighbour, and he was saying about because um, he's he's from Jamaica, and he goes, "This country he goes is so interested." Like when you're talking about like um, newspapers and that. Always interested in the age. It's always yes, it's true, such and it? such, 36, such and such. That's always yes, the first it's thing. Why is it's like, that? why? What does that matter? What does, I don't, I've never quite understood that myself, really, because mm. it's the first thing that comes up in it. Well, what's that got to do with it, anything? They do. Always put that. Yeah, it's strange. Yeah. Also, it seems like in the, in, in the cities, in, the, in the London, in that city bubble as well, 
that people are interested in what you do, what you got. Mm. I live out in on the coast. Yeah. And everyone's not interested in what you got, what you did, who you mm. are. In fact, mo- most conversation is about your dogs. Yeah. I, like when we moved, when I moved down and I got a couple of dogs, people said, oh, we, we've heard there's a new dog in the village. Because like, people yeah. recognise you from your dog, they don't. Yeah. yeah. Which is nice. People get themselves to themselves more or less. I've had, if they'd have said, we've heard there's a new snake in the village. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my my neighbour took the road as soon as anyone got, Moves into my crescent, he tells them who I am. Oh, do they? Yeah, he loves it. Do you know who lives there? He tells everybody. <coughs> then they look at me. Think, but it's good, isn't it? It's good to look back on. It's good to know yeah. that you've done something, re- something that you really well, enjoy. Like I said, still getting experiences yeah. and stuff. But you've got to be yeah. proud of it as well, wouldn't you? Do you know what I mean? Well, well I would be if it was, I'd, I'd had ambitions to do it. I wrote in to be a contestant and thought, oh, well, this is touch. Mm. I still am, mm. really. I did want to be Bruce Lee and do a few movies and stuff. I've done a couple of stunt stuff. Yeah. Back to, to, so oh, yeah. Destro- yeah. What was destroy- that in? Uh, do, oh, let me try and pronounce it. Hecasina Tar Divina T. It's an old singing and dancing Bollywood film set in oh, right. Bob, Bobmin Moors. Yeah. Down in Cornwall. And... Uh, my friends does stunt work, a lot, a lot of Bollywood stuff. Asked me if I want to come down there and do it. And um, I'm fighting a big, handsome guy. It's fantastic. I was driving BMW M class, yeah. chasing down motorcyclists, which I'd love to do. Yeah. <laughs> although, I'd, although I do ride a cycle, but as you know, I'm all right when I'm on there, not when other people are in my way. <laughs> and um, I'm fighting a big, handsome guy with the star. And I took a fall. Now I was on lots of painkillers because this is before I had my hips replaced mm, mm. and I didn't feel nothing what I've done is you, you, you've got tendons that hold your rotator cuff in place I've ripped all of them off there's none on there now I can't lift it I've just cancelled an operation actually where there's going to put a, a tendon in from a cadaver I'm right. a dead person and then wrap it over so I could get more thingy but, right. some, but it's a like six months uh, recuperation and recovery and I've got some bits and pieces coming in and you know, I've got a lot of bits and pieces to do, so I've deferred it, although I've had to wait a year for this anyway. I've deferred it, which is fantastic for the surgeon, Mr. Murti, to do to next year. He's going to see me again. But it's a massive big deal. Yeah. This one's bad, and I've got a full thickness tear on the front, which they can't replace because I've got six bolts holding a previous full thickness chunk of mat full this big piece of meat come off the back yeah is that wear and tear did you do it at, at um, gladiators just wear and tear some of it is where, where I was where I, could, I was in so much pain I could only walk for three for three minutes before I had to sit down so I'm banging in the painkillers which is giving me was that then problems. your hips were hurting uh, actually when I was on the glads I remember I used to have a six mile circuit run around mm. Brands Hatch where I used to live and I could only do like five miles and my the oxygen was there, but I just had this numb feeling. I thought, what's wrong with that? What's going on? And I'd have to walk the last mile back home. And I thought, what is this? And I couldn't mm. work it out. Well, it was the beginning of the 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 rotate the cuff in the hip, rubbing against the, the wall there. Yeah. But it took years and years. They told me to string out as long as I could, which was 10 years. But this is, this is 15 years ago. So that was obviously the beginning of it. I By mean, the time I got the X-ray, it was already bone against through. bone. Yeah, so had, I presume bloody but, painful. Though. You've had both. I'm from, telling you, yeah. well, as as it got worse, it's it worked its way into the top part of the the hip. Yeah, so, so it's mm. grinding. Then this one went. So you've um, had both replaced, was it? Yeah, yeah. I had to wait. Delayed this. This one was delayed for a year. Oh, it's not good. So what? After you've had that done, so what's the recovery on that? How long? This one was incredible. This one, I'm still having trouble with it, but it's like that. Mm. Uh, I was in the gym within three weeks. Mm. I had, I've had three hernias done as well last year. I was in the gym six days later. They told me to leave it with like six months or something. You so, are a gladiator, aren't you? Yeah, well, oh, well. <laughs> she said. But I've done training all my life and I know my body really well. Yeah. Mm. Not to the extent to think to myself, stop. Stop doing a bit of exercise. You're full of painkillers, mm. but for the most part, I know. I know. Actually, the, the hernia has really improved my my technique because 
you know, I'm being very, very careful with each of them. Mm. Isolating the muscle because if I press too hard on my guts, it's being strict with you. Yes, yeah. really, and it impro- yeah. But um, did you ever have like like because a lot of footballers had like quarter zones, didn't they, and stuff like that? Oh, you uh, yeah, that? yeah, in my shoulder. Yeah, and didn't, do, didn't do a lot. I, I took a whack. I had old Hil- Dr. Hillary Jones um, gave me um, a quarter zone around his house. Did he? Yeah, I'm, I see him at a charity event at um, Chessington. Uh, for GMTV or TVAM back then, I said, don't have a look at my shoulder, it's killing me. He said, well, you show me some bodybuilding exercises and uh, I'll, I'll give you a uh, court zone. And I, I ain't getting in trouble now. So after the event, I went to his f- lovely place in Basingstoke and swimming pool, everything. Classic little car, lovely. And he had a fantastic gym and I, I showed him this, that and the other. And he came me a court zone, but I took a whack uh, on on a rugby game called Powerball, and it went again. So it only masks. Yeah, that's really. what I'm saying. Like it's like because a lot of footballers who had quarter zones in there and now can't walk because yeah, they no, probably just, shouldn't have been playing no, on it. It, it because... only masks it. No, I'm not a fan of it. Yeah, uh, I've had quite a few here and there, but it's no good. You can only have so many, can't you? As well, is it? I don't know. I've, we had a few. But no, it's not good because it's just masking. You don't yeah. know what damage you're doing. Because when you're hurting, that's what, that's that's what, what your body telling you to stop, isn't it? Yes, I, I felt no, I had that much in me to get through these, these, this week of um, stunt work. I, I was banging in too much, way too much. Mm. I didn't feel a thing. And yeah. I've, I've torn everything off. It's just, just yeah, you yeah. feel all the bone there. And I've got ruptured bi- I got a ruptured bicep from my dog. Do you remember my dog Ruby? Did you ever see the dog the boy no. by Frenchman? No. She's 11 stone, like this rescued Dr. Bordeaux, you know, film, what's that film with Tom Hanks? Oh, Coach, yeah. One of them. She see a rabbit and went bang, and tore my bicep in half. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, gladiators, kickboxing, boxing, all that, nothing. Dog sees a rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> that one's ruptured as well. I was working part time looking after, taking naughty kids to school, a really. A school called Elm School, which looks after kids with lots of, lots of problems, and you're taught how to when they ain't had the medication. And if you're looking after them in the back of the bus, mm. sometimes they take the stuff out that the, the uh, headrests out in front at the driver. Mm. And which, if you're doing seventy mile an hour down the motorway, it could be dangerous. Yeah. So you, you, you get lessons for a week out to you know control them. And I'm controlling a seven year old kid. I've got his arms braced, and I've still got big peck, and I'm bracing him. And he's seven. Incredibly strong, and like, don't know if he had his meds or whatnot. And because it's like a velcro, I mean, pop, torn the bicep off there, mm. which they can't reattach. Oh, yeah, so, so a seven year old and my dog, <laughs> <laughs> not, not no big professional rugby player, which we yeah. did have on the glads. We had used to, see, they used to say, Oh, this is a uh, this is Errol from from rugby who plays rugby, he's a uh, He's a postman, but no, no semi pros or pros. Oh, no, really? Like, yeah, I know. We well, kickboxing champions, all sorts, but say, oh, what? Because like them sort of sports, you know, martial arts, you still ain't, uh, you know, lottery funded or stuff. They yeah. still have other jobs. I remember one contestant, what was her name? Eunice. Yes. She became a stunt woman, didn't she? One, one, of, one of the best in the world, yeah. Yeah, well, don't, didn't she do Golden Eye and all that malarkey? Yes. Uh, well, Cubby Broccoli or. His daughter, Broccoli, what's her name? Barbara Broccoli, and she was a fan of the Gladiators. And she see Eunice, and what's, we are doing stunt work. In fact, a stunt man said to me, there was a, jo- a, a game called Polex. It was a 40-foot pole that yeah. span. Yeah, yeah. And we used to have to jump off into an airbag. He said that would be a £1,000 ju- each jump if, if that was a stunt job. Oh, oh, we had three guys turn into top stuntmen that done some of the biggest films you've ever what, like contestants? Or? Yes. Oh, Buster Reeves and, um, oh, bloody hell. Guy who stunt, stunt double for Piers Brosnan. Oh, f- I can't believe I've got his name. Mark Mottram and Eunice. Mm. So Eunice, um, she doubled. She's having a fight with Piers Brosnan in a sauna. That, that's, this is her. And she went on to be well, Angelina Jolie's best friend. Why, mate? I've, I've, see, uh, Amazing, isn't it? Like, Angelina Jolie say, say about it. Oh, she's a one-off. She don't care whether you're the biggest film star in the world or not. Like, mm. it's if you're a nice person and that. Yeah. In fact, she said I was her favourite gladiator. <laughs> <laughs> but she, she was lovely. She was. They, they, they 
took her on as a gladiator at live at a live show, the last one we yeah. did at Sheffield. Yeah, yeah. Right, but she she came up to me and she she overheard some of the producers said, "Oh, we only used her to get more to sell more tickets for the show." Right. This is the thing about you know producers, mm. they're not they're not your f- f- friends. No, no. Stop TV stars. It's a numbers stars. game, isn't it? Yes, they're they're, they're they're looking out for the success of their product that they're associated with. Yeah, yeah, that's a bit brutal. Right? So she's had the last laugh, really. She, I heard she's um she's got a fish farm now. No, she had a restaurant and she was a stunt. She had a stunt team and stunt coordinator. All right, and uh, yeah, she. Fantastic. She had a good laugh. She lovely she was. Yeah. I always remember that story from that because I remember watching that series of Gladiators um, and then finding out her after story about going on to be a stunt woman and all that. I thought, God, that's... Because where is she, oh, she was from Scotland? Was she from Scotland? Was she no, from... Liverpool. Oh, Liverpool. She, she doubled in the film Salt, Tomb Raider, you know, the Bond films. Yeah. Mark Mottram stunt doubled for Piers Brosnan. And loads of stuff. I think even one of the, the, the stunt, American stunt version of an Oscar. Then it's Buster Reeves, who does all the fight choreography in Batman, mm. um, Tarzan. Uh, what else? Oh, Troy. Yes, she's in Troy. Can... She's playing a guy. She's stunt doubling uh, as a man, Eunice, in Troy. Oh, really? Yeah, and Buster Reeves did all the fight choreography between Brad Pitt and um, Bannon. Oh. Yeah, it's weird because it's amazing it because you don't realise that about the contestants actually done well out of the show yeah. as well, isn't it? You yeah. hear about most of it is because of Barbara Broccoli. It's a big fan. Oh, my other two mates got jobs on there. Um, Daz, who's Diesel, he's doing really well. In, he's done loads of work and movies. Um, Blade Two. Mm-hmm. I went. I went to stay with him filming that in Prague. Oh, he phoned me up on a Sunday. He said, "What are you doing?" I said, "Nothing." He said, "Why don't you come and see me?" I said, "Where are you?" He said, "Prague." I said, "Right, I'll pop over tomorrow." As you do. Yeah, <laughs> but it wasn't. It, it took me, I, next day I had to uh, get a ticket and I was out there on a the Tuesday and yeah. he sent a car to pick me up from the airport to take him to his um, trailer, you know, because he's like six billion. And um, I'm sitting there and he he popped in, he had to go and do some bits and pieces and he took me to meet um, Wesley Snipes in his his trailer, mm. bigger than my bleeding house, it's enormous. <laughs> Oh, oh, that's what I said. I said, fucking hell, Wesley, it's like it's bigger than my house. And he laughed. He said to Daz, oh, is this your home, boy? It like, you make from home. And I was spent a week there. It's brilliant. Oh, that's I was brilliant. out one night and his, his, his PA, uh, Wesley Snipes, was an English uh, lesbian lady. She was there with her girlfriend, all in leather. He likes he liked then to do the... The tables, you know, disc jockeying tables. Right. There's a strobe light going. And I'm also with um, the cat from Red Dwarf, who I've met several times since. Um, Johnny, um, what's his name? Terrible. I've seen, I, I seen him, I only seen him the other week at one of the comic cons. Danny Jules. Danny, J- Danny, J- yeah. Danny something Jules. Yeah, Danny John Jules. Uh, I think like there's that. a cat from Red Dwarf, a strobe light guy, and Wesley Snipes playing the records, and there's these never clad lesbians. We start happening every night. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. I had a real good laugh. I, I was smoking with one of the stars from... Um, smoking? Yeah, smoking, you know, Jamaican smoking. Yeah. I went on Glass no more. Uh, with... Medicinal purposes, wasn't it? For, it's for the shoulder, isn't it? Walking Dead. Yeah. I better not say who it was. He's a big, big star. And uh, it's brilliant. I mean... Hmm. Cause like it's on the BBC now, isn't it? But we, but they have had like other shows in the, on like you could say like Ninja Warrior was a big one, wasn't it? That was quite a big. Yeah, I've been watching that be, way before we did it over here. I used to watch it. Yeah, do you remember? Do you remember Katesh? Was it Katesh's castle? castle. Or yeah, 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 remember that? That I was watch funny. That. Yeah. Was that a Japanese thing? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah just fun. Like, like madcap games, yeah, really yeah. silly, silly games. Yeah. But no, Gladiators was like part of. My Child, childhood, yeah. childhood growing which, up, yeah, which That's, is nice. Which it's is, funny because you say about the fitness and getting kids to the fact, and I felt like I mentioned it to you in a comment on one of his posts. It's like I'm watching you a lot at the peak physical fitness on a Saturday night, thinking mm. I want to be like that. Yes, yeah, so and then this just is what's good. but then just Inspires eating a sausage people. and batter and chips. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, so uh, add on a Saturday That's protein. Night. Yeah, mm-hmm. on a Saturday night in front of Gladiator. Pyramid. I used to do... I don't think they have that anymore, the No, it's, well, so many injuries on it. A lot of people yeah. were hurt on there. A lot of their kneecaps were t- torn out, um, mm-hmm. ankles. 
ankles kept going. Then we got um, ankle braces. Then the, the transferred up to their knees. Mm. Sharon Davis had to have nine. Oh yeah, nine, I forgot she was on it, wasn't yeah, she? Sharon nine um, operations on her knee. I think Rhino did his knee on there. Loads. So they took it. That took it out. She it's come, a really good game. It's my favourite. She 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 joined. When did she join? In the third series well, or something her, like that, was it? Husband Derek Redman, who is a two four hundred meter runner, who got famous because his dad helped him around yes. the track. Yeah, I remember it. Yeah, he, he came on as like a timekeeper and stuff, and um, they married to her. And they took her on. Um, she, she didn't fit in really well with it. Really, she didn't. Um, I don't, it wasn't her thing, really. No, Fantastic she's sort of athlete. like you're introducing like an already bred yeah, star. Established. That's, that yeah. was the problem, really. But and it wasn't. But sort to of... a new kids, that you know, kids of coming in like six, seven, they wouldn't have known who she was. No, that's the same thing with this life. You know, a lot of kids. So, um, parents saying, "Oh, they love it." My kids are sitting there, like my parents used to do with me, and sitting there watching it, and they're loving it. Mm. I can't. I don't. I'm not. I don't want to watch it. It's not. It's not what I turn out. I flick through, yeah. and there's a few things I think, oh, that, that wall looks like a ladder. You know, I can't enjoy it. I would have enjoyed it years yeah. ago, like I did yeah. the American mind, but not now. It's not my thing now. You've but heard. people think it's, well, you've just, no, I want him to do well because if it, it doing well reflects back on us. Yeah. Mm. I say, oh, what, that old crap. You used to do that crap. No, it's the ob- it, it's yeah. doing really well. Mm. Um, yeah, they've kept a lot of the old games in yeah, there, which that's, well, that's the they thing didn't want to change say, it too much. Yeah, yeah, when they say, oh, we want to do our, our own thing, and I look, well, it's the same. I or think, yeah, yeah, but, but, I think, like, but if they, I think if they reinvent something too much, then then it fails, yes. doesn't it? And that's but, probably well, why they've gone back. Because of what it was. Yeah. They've done mm. it. It looks great. So they've gone back um, to the old format, haven't they? I like Bradley. He's, we knew him from the very first show because he was engaged or dating Donna, who was our um, choreographer and cheerleader. Oh, right. So I first met him backstage with his kid from a previous relationship. Yeah. And I just thought some, someone just like, sneaked in the back. <laughs> I went, all right, mate, what, what's, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm Donna's boyfriend. I said, oh, what, well, mate? And he's, he's a lovely bloke. Yeah. yeah. But he's, there's nothing with Bradley doing the show. His, his son's really miscast. Um a what for it, Barney? What I've seen, I think it's not good. Mm. Uh, it's too too big a show for him. Bradley's set, he's on everything, isn't he? Mm. And his boys in lots of shows. The Chase, which I like watching, you know, the, mm. and loads. He's just the the Larkins. He's on everything, yeah. isn't he? There, but they go on holiday together, don't they? Yeah, they do yeah. Things. I think, you know, give someone else a job. Yeah. Hunter could do it. He just presented. Um, uh, Britain's strongest man. Oh, did really he? Really good job. Yeah, he, he asked appropriate, sensible questions with a bit of sense of humour. Not too long. Mm-hmm. Have a look. Okay, I, I said I, I said to him, "Hey, by and win up your eyes, you should be doing that job." Also, you know, he's got an unusual insight, a different perspective. He's done it. He's been there. Mm-hmm. It's perfect. He had he had approached him. His agent had. I didn't want to know. He's perfect. And there's uh, another girl I like who, who's actually presented a strong man called Ackley. Michelle Ackley, she, a black girl, does um, like, uh, property shows and this BBC shows in the morning. She's really good. Mm. Yeah, I think I've seen her. Yeah, she's really good. I could think, you know, that that would make a good pair. The hunter, definitely, they're a lot better than them two. Mm. And he's funny. Wow. Okay. It's good. Well, you touched on oh. one more thing because you've gone um, quick. I noticed you've had a bit of a health scare in, in the last bit, couple of yeah. years. Loads. Yeah. <laughs> I nearly nearly kicked the bucket with um, double pneumonia and um, pleurisy. Shit. Yeah, I had stool for my lungs and uh, the bottom there draining off the fluid. Yeah, I was in a terrible state. I was isolated as well because of the infection. Was that before but COVID I've, or? Yeah. I mean. Which, you know, I've had COVID a couple of times, but that's, that's enough. I've got a scarred lung from that and all sorts of problems. Yeah. Oh, yeah. After that was, because I was so sick of going to the doctors, uh, I didn't want to go with Cold, but I thought well, what a bit flu, mm. and I'm filling up plastic bags full of snotty snitches for for about eight weeks. Two months. infection, and so and I've tried to run it off, but I just clear my lungs uh, out. Mm. So I'm really ill, and uh, the, the partner said I'd better find an ambulance. And now I'm all right. 
then four hours in, I said, get an ambulance because I couldn't move. And I had another time I had um, severe um, acute pancreatitis, which can kill you as well. Um, I took, I had to go and take the shed down because my hips were still bad then. I took a load of painkillers, double what I normally took. Then, uh, then you get this thing called severe. <laughs> My gut started to explode. Oh, blimey. I thought, what's going on here? Because of the meds? Yeah, yeah. I doubled up. Because of the pain, I could hardly walk. And it, it was a free shed from my friend, mm. and I had to take it down. It's a bit of graft. So I, I you know, beasted through it. I thought I'd, I, I took, I'd, I'd get, I got prescription codeine, and I take Nurofen as well. I did. Now, my hips are done and everything. I, I'm hardly on anything at all, mm. and um, which is good. Every now and again, I have to. And uh, I had to get the ambulance out. It's a terrible state. Oh, oh the, the, the ambulance girls. Because in my bedroom, I've got my gladiator hat and stuff. Yeah. And I'm going, what is this? And, and I said, oh, you should be a gladiator. Now I'm doing an interview in the back of the... Back of the <laughs> I am like this. Oh, and I ask him all questions. You know, it's both really that bad. I'm going, oh, you can't. Because what happens, I, I did what I took. I drank pints and pints of water. But... I mean, my belly was just blowing up like this. The pain was horrendous. It squashes your liver. So it's a terrible state. Yeah, I'm doing it in it for When I was talking about that, bloody cheek, I mean, I'm, I'm really, I've got oxygen up my nose. I've got a thing, a, a tube through my, through my back going out underneath my lung to drain this uh, pleurisy fluid off and everything else. Um, terrible stuff. I'd lost a stone and a half within about a week. I was in a really, really bad way. And uh, like a nurse came and said, oh, someone's come to see you. I thought, that's nice. It's a bit late. It's like nine o'clock. Turn the lights was off. Why am I getting here at nine o'clock? Because it shuts at eight, mm. visitors. Lights come on. Oh, mate, it's Gary. I went, oh, all right, mate. I took me here because he's got his camera out. I thought, well, huh? I didn't fucking know him. His mum was in the, in the hospital. He's there sitting with his mum. It's just some stranger. I, I love that show. Can I have my picture done with you? That's it. He sat next to me with his camera. I'm doing me here. Like, <laughs> no, yeah, I'm going to look like yeah, Brad Pitt and I. Like, never off duty. <laughs> I can cheat though, isn't it? <laughs> Deliberacy. <laughs> I, I, he said, oh, I'll, see, I'll see you tomorrow. I thought, yeah, fuck, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> what the? I, then, you know, if I didn't, they go, who do you think he is? Yeah. I think I'm someone fucking dying. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's the thing. Like, if you don't do some of these things, they think, oh, he's right up himself. Yeah. yeah. Like, but sometimes you just want to have a bit of well, you always, break, oh, especially I mean, if you're nearly dying. <laughs> you, you've... I met these big stars, you know, when they get accused of being up, you know, if they, you're being asked to do something continuously all the time, over and over again. Kind of grates on you. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, if you're big, look, Z level, me, you know, <laughs> we get it. Act, so, but again, it was, like, I'm the, if I see Brian Jacks, who was the star of this 76, I'm going to be like, oh, so, but, as we wrap up then, what do you see then in the next few years? What, what do you see? What's, what's, for, what's, for, what's for Cobra in the next few years, Uncle Mick? Well, because I've been ill so much, I've had a lot of friends pass away, I'm happy that I wake up the next day breathing. Just, yeah. I don't have no long-term thing is. Get me roof done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah got we know a few roof. roofers. <laughs> yeah, needs to be. You yeah. can't get where, where I am. There's only like a few builders down there. Then they say, oh, yeah, they want, if you want it done quick, it's very expensive or we do it in six months. Mm. Like you say, it's nice just to do these little things. Um, I like doing it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just plodding along. I'm, yeah. I'm really content, actually. Mm. I live over the road from the beach. Good, mm. yeah. Uh, down on the Romney Marsh in the summer. It's lovely. A bit bleak in the winter. So I'm content, you know. Mm. Being that's that's the main tired. thing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah mm. I've got, I've done so many exciting, really good, fun things. There's... Nothing gets me excited or motivated for anything. Yeah. I go training still, or physiotherapy is. So no, this, I'm quite mm. content. Yeah, nice. But, but sometimes I feel guilty because, you know. Yeah, you shouldn't feel happy. guilty. Yeah. yeah. I get annoyed a lot still. I'm that age where, I, you know, I shout at the telly and the radio. <laughs> and they have an opinion that don't agree with mine. Yeah. Um, no, I'm, I'm happy, really. Nice. Shall we close it off on the camera then? You wrap up then. 
All right, yeah, so thank you, Uncle Mick, for coming on. Oh, it thank was, you for uh, the, the £5,000 fee. <laughs> yeah, it was nice to uh, hear your story, even though I'm your... Well, I love to talk about myself. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, no, thank you for coming on. It's so been... Uh, oh, did you know he does uh, ballroom dancing? That's, I actually like Strictly. Do you? Yeah. Did you not ever get asked to go on it? I'd love to have done. I'm too late now, isn't it? Very good, isn't it, eh? Mm -hmm. It's mad. Yeah, I'll, actually, give me a choice of glads. Or strictly, it'd be strictly, mm -hmm. and I can't dance. There's the, there's the place <laughs> to learn. You don't it? have to dance on no. strictly, apparently. <laughs> no, in, fact, in fact, if you're like Anne Whittacombe. You what know. about I'm a celebrity, get me out of it? No. <laughs> Shit. I come from a big family, don't I? Yeah, Sharing yeah. one toilet yeah. with like 20 people. It was bad enough growing up. Mm. But you, but you, yeah. Uh, Mind you, there's always a price, isn't there? Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. I'll... Oh, get me out of it. I'm a celebrity, get me out of it. My mate was working on there. I'll, I'll, I'll leave it there. There's another, there's another half hour story there. You, yeah. must, you must have been in the toilet after a 22 stone gladiator, though. I bet that weren't no, too pleasant either. No, though, fortunately, it? there was loads around the uh, National Indoor Arena. <laughs> but no, you've got a point there. I've, actually, you said that one of the gladiators did come into mine then from being. Um, a powerful pupper <laughs> leaving a smell. Yeah, there was one particular one. I won't say who. All right. All right cheers. Thank you. Yeah, cheers no, for thanks that. very Appreciate much, it. Mick. Appreciate it.